Welcome to Mark Hummel's Harmonica Party. I'm here with my friend Jason Ricci, who we go way back. Um, yeah. Jason is actually up here at the Yellow Pine Harmonica Festival that we're playing together. And Jason did a very fiery set as usual last night. And uh, uh, made, I'm sure, a lot of new fans and saw some of your, your, your people that already knew you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, Jason's road into music and a uh, little bit about his, just some of his uh, stories that he's got because he's done quite a, he's had quite a life so far. Yeah. Haven't you? Yeah. 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 And uh, and and we go back to when you were what were you seventeen when I first met yeah, you? Yeah, seventeen in, in, in Boise. Yeah, because I the had, state we're in. I, so. I had like uh, I had gotten kicked out of school and I got a GD. Right. So I was in college before my class had graduated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, here and uh, and Ken Harris. There's a club here called the Blues Bouquet. Right. Ken's actually here right now. Yeah, and yeah. Ken kind of got me, like, I was interested in this a little bit, and uh, Ken was like, okay, if, if you're going to do it, like, he, he had a blues club. Right. He was like, I'll pay you 10 bucks to come. Yeah. So you can play, because that's and what I wanted. basically sit in the door, he told me. Right. Right, yeah, or on the stage, right, right yeah, right. and then, um, but you have to learn this stuff, right? And, it, and he'd give me like a little Walter thing, and I, right, and then I'd show like the first time I showed up, I'd be like, he'd be like, it was Juke, wow, the first song that he wanted, yeah, to learn. that's the first yeah. thing he asked me about when I, right, met him, yeah. and I still couldn't play it, but like right. that he would be like, uh, okay, well, play it for me before the, you know, before the day, and I, and I would, I would say, well, put the tape on. Right. And he'd be like, no, play it without the tape. I can't, right. I can't. We'll come back next week. Right. And he did that to me a few a few weeks yeah. in a row, you know, That's before. And then, and then he kind of like took pity on me because I was trying. Right. You know, but right. I, I think I thought that I knew it and I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it was right. like with you. And then you, I was like, I hit the first note. You're like, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, yeah. now, no, no. My, my question. Okay. Cause you, you're from Maine originally. Yep. Born you and grew raised. Up in Portland, yep, Maine. Portland. And then was Boise the second place you came to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Boise, then I remember seeing you back in Maine after that, as I recall. Right. I was just home for the summer and, yeah. and hanging out with Nick Curran right. and stuff. And yeah. you and Nick basically started, you and Nick Curran played, started playing music together? Yeah, we played in like some of Nick's first bands that were not his like high school bands. Right. Because Nick was playing his whole life. Because his right. dad was had the oldest uh, blues band in New England called the Upsetters. Really? And there was a great harmonica player in the band named who we, nobody talks about, named Dave Wakefield, who was a sax player too, and played. That wasn't the Blue Lights band, was it? No, okay. I mean it was like you, there was also um, D W Gill's band. I, I know, know D W. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, but but no, the the Upsetters were had been, were an institution, but they only played in Maine, really, as far okay. as I knew. Kind of like Mike, BW in a way. Right. Yeah. Mike yeah. Curran was Nick's, oh, really? Nick's dad wow. was a guitar player. Okay. So that must have had a big impact on him playing. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I like, so when I met Nick, he was already really, really good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I was just yeah. kind of getting... Now, how old little, was he when you met him? Fifteen. And you were 16 at the same time? No, I was like 17 or 18. Okay, I didn't so you're meet him until older. after Boise. Right. Okay. Like, yeah, because I didn't care about blues. Right. So when I say we grew up together, I mean, we, <laughs> we grew up together like before we were 21. Right. But, but still, like, he would stay overnight at my mom's house and was stuff. He, was he into punk rock? Were you guys both no, into punk rock? No, that's the thing. I was. Mm -hmm. He wasn't into that shit. Interesting. He was like, you know, that's that's, so that's not really good music. That's so you know, you know funny. yeah. And, he gets and then he it. gets into it later and acts like, oh, like that's been that's me all yeah, right, that's, Shut up, bro. Shut up, bro. That is funny. <laughs> he was into everything though. Like, yeah. I mean, one night though, like not punk rock, but everything else. Like one night, uh, he just did out of nowhere, just did a whole Elvis night. Wow! And it was like perfect. I it bet. was better than any Elvis impersonator I I've ever yeah. seen in my I life. Bet. That guy was so great at channeling, 
channeling different singers and guitar yeah, players and little stuff Little Richard like that. and shit. Little Richard, was, I, little Richard was off the charts. I heard he fooled Kim. That he, really? He, you know, because he was so good at the recording, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And mic placement and tube mics and making it yeah. sound like the 50s that I heard he put it on and, and, and asked Kim, who, who is this? And Kim said, Little Richard. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's said, pretty good, that's, man. That's me. That's yeah. pretty good. That's great, man. <laughs> but yeah, I got a lot of Nick stories, you know, yeah, just from that short. He was very shy. Yeah. Yeah. Very like, yeah. and he did, he did like do any drugs or anything like that. You know, and he was into cars and, yeah. and he had the hair, you know, already right. as a kid. He was like a fifties. Right. He did seem yeah. shy. I only met him one time and I were feeling kind of bad because I <laughs> was sort of rousing him, you know. It's good. Like, it's good. I go, He's, man, looks like you've been to the pimp store and he kind of, <laughs> <laughs> he just got real shy, you know. He was really shy. Yeah. 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 He was a great kid. He was so like pure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Great talent, though, man. Way, way too early. Oh, man. That one ripped me up. Yeah. Pretty good. I bet yeah. it did, yeah. So, uh, so like, let's talk about, um, I mean, the first time I saw you was in Boise. I think I met you up in Portland. And then the third time I saw you was, I want to say, was it in the 90s when I, when I, when you were with Big Al? Yeah. I mean, but I was a big fan of yours, Right away, uh-huh. uh, you were one of the first touring blues, professional blues harmonica acts that I ever saw. Oh wow! But I already had your records of yours oh, okay. before. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I was trying to figure out all that stuff. But I, I, and I was back then real into chromatic. Right. And to me, like you and William Clark, you know. Look, look, I don't want to say anything bad about the other guys, but you guys were using the button. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah. I was into that. And that I know, was, I know there are other guys are unusual. fancy and stuff. Yeah, it was, but it was kind of an unusual thing in a way. Back yeah. then, and yeah. you were playing in first position right. and stuff like that. And, right. and I was real into chromatic and that sound of that and that West Coast thing. But like, yeah. but like, uh, I just liked it a lot, and I liked all. This. And you also did like some unusual numbers, like. And you remember, I've asked you about this stuff. It radiates that charm right, and stuff right, like that. Right, so, right. so yeah. I would, I was really studying. And you're also your use of three draw bends was kind of like above the bar for a lot of the guys that I was seeing because you were hitting some jazzier kind of stuff. third position stuff? No, even in second. Oh, in second. I mean, okay. but in third too. Yeah. But but yeah, like yeah, like you were yeah. using three draw. In third, way before most yeah. people, most yeah, like before, funny. before yeah. Kim was right. Yeah. Kim didn't do as much third until after. Yeah, yeah. I think. So yeah. I was into that. So I and and I, so I was going to go see you wherever you were. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. And plus, you were nice to me. Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, you were yeah. like, I mean, you were that like, kind you of were stuff like, makes a big who difference. Who is this yeah. kid or whatever? Man, that makes a huge difference when you're young. Yeah, and you would huge. like talk. There'd be other guys around that were like mm -hmm. you had known forever. And you would just let me sort of hang out. Right. And, and if I, I'd say something stupid, you'd still be friendly. Right. You know? That's yeah. how I felt about Cotton. I remember hanging around Cotton when I was like 16, and it was like, I was seeing all this stupid stuff, and he was so nice to me. Yeah. It was like, that just had such an impact. Right. And some of the other guys, yeah. they kind of would. They would I know, like, guys yeah. are kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah later, yeah. kid. Right, right, right. 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 Uh, that's true. Right. That makes a big difference. So, um,. So Big Al and the Heavyweights was that really the first touring band that you? Yeah, had? yeah, it was. I mean, to me, that was a big gig. Like, I was already kind of. Uh, I mean, I was trying to put my own thing together. Right. But I was working in treatment um, as a detox clinician. Wow. Which is a fancy word for saying like a babysitter that makes sure people don't die at night. Right. <laughs> yeah. So basically, and if somebody yeah. something happened, I just call. Right. I wasn't. I. I wasn't. A, equipped to do anything other than basic CPR. Right. But wow. I, I did that for a year and I was in North Carolina with Eric Deaton. We had a band together and I had known Eric from Jackson, Mississippi and stuff. And uh, Now, didn't you live in Mississippi for a minute? I did. When I first moved to Memphis from Idaho and right. lived there, I, wow. I moved there to be around Pat Ramsey. Interesting. So I had a regular job at waiting tables. At now, a, how did you yeah. meet Pat? I was driving home from Idaho, 
to Maine for the summer uh-huh. and decided just to stop in, in Memphis to see what was happening on, huh. a, on a random night. Wow. And then remember, there's no internet or anything. I just right. kind of go see what it is. So I went to Beale Street. I had heard about it. And I'm walking down and I hear this amazing harmonica. And it's it's Billy Gibson. Oh, and okay. he's like my age, and that was right. like really weird at right. that time because there was nobody in their twenties playing yeah. her good harmonica. Right. He was doing uh, "Right to Trust My Baby" by oh, Sonny Boy, interesting. Okay. and was hitting all the little microtone bends yeah, yeah, yeah. with a good hand walk. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, "Man, he goes, you think I'm good?" He goes, "Wait, till you see the next guy." And then Pat got up, and at that point, like Madison Slim and you and everybody had told me, "Listen." All them fast guys stay away from those guys. Right? <laughs> but I heard this guy, and it was all blue notes. Yeah. It's not like the top end of the harp. This right. was all band notes on the bottom. Real, mm. so it was like Butterfield on steroids. Right. And I'd heard a little bit of Mad Cat doing it, but this was more like almost mechanical. Like sounded like Johnny Winter playing guitar. Right. On a harmonica. Who he played with. Right. And yeah. I didn't know that or anything. Right. And then wow. I and then I so I told him that night, I said, I'm moving back here. I'm quitting college and moving back here. So <laughs> I went home Because what are you thinking? <laughs> I went home, I landscaped yeah. for the summer. Uh-huh. I got a thousand dollars saved. And I moved to Memphis. Wow. And I just went into every single... I went, Pat ran a jam on Tuesday nights at Blue City, and then he had a gig on Wednesday night. So in a lot of ways, he was kind of the architect, in a way, for your style to a certain degree. I think he's the skeletal structure, even more so than little Walter, behind interesting. almost everything I play. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But well, he, like, he didn't... You know, one thing I really yeah. like about you, you're one of the few hard players that really acknowledges where you got stuff from. I love Pat. And yeah. I love I love all them old guys too. And yeah. Pat didn't really like I mean I mean he liked little Walter, but he never learned any of it. Right. It was right. weird. Yeah. And he was also kind of a blue eyed soul singer too. Oh my God. Yeah, he was a really good singer. Yeah, he was singer. really mean to me about, was he? about singing. Was he? Huh. <laughs> yeah. He's like you stole all my legs and you can't sing your way out of a paper bag. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got, he was a really good singer. Oh, my God. He was I, incredible. I, yeah, and he was, really was a true blue-eyed soul singer. There was nothing like yeah. it. And, I, you know, and there was Curtis that could sing like that. And, you know, right. and then Delay was interesting, too, right. but not Delay like that. Delay was great. Right, but it was a yeah. different thing, you know. Yeah. Pat was incredible watching those night, those gigs night after night after night and stuff. But right. It was really, really amazing yeah. Yeah. yeah and I would just go home and try to learn everything from from memory so in a lot of ways your your the chromatic interest sounds like it developed into the overblow thing yeah I kind of I, my, my I mean I liked the sound of octaves and amplified chromatic like mm-hmm. and I still do like my next record I'm going back I'm doing some mm-hmm. chromatic stuff I'm brushing up at home wow yeah but I'm not ready to pull it out yet um, I wrote a couple of songs that quite I really often. hate to hear that, Jason. Oh, it's not going to be that good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, the songs are cool, actually. But it's stuff that, like, no matter how well I play it on diatonic, it won't sound as good on that. And that's the only reason I'm playing the instrument, is it's just certain things it just sounds better for. Yeah, I just think chromatic and diatonic have such different sounds. I, I just, like, kind of gravitated away from it, and I don't know why... Um, the Boss by William Clark came out, and I mean, I was blown away right. by that record. Yeah, that's a great record. And that and that and that title track, oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I was like, right. wow. Yeah, right, is yeah. that the one with Benny Moat and Swing and all that? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. That's a great record. Yeah, I was talking to yeah. at your gig. I was right. talking to Jeanette or is it right. Janelle or right. Jeanette? Jeanette? Janelle. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to her about that number, right. and she said Bill was like stressed about it. Well, you know, I mean, I he found out from her that she was, that he was very, he was kind of threatened by, I mean, she told me this later, she goes, she goes, you know, Bill always thought, you know, that you could play all the stuff that he couldn't play oh, on wow. chromatic. Yeah, that's what she said, and I never got that from Clark. I always kind of got yeah. this impression like, <laughs> oh, I'll kick your ass on yeah. you know, <laughs> I just always kind of got that from him, but, you know, I mean... He was very aware of kind of, you know, all the other players. and 
Um, Me and him got along good. We got yeah, we good friends. I'd love to hear some stories. We've never really talked about yeah. him. Yeah. No, he was. He was I a was. Good friend. I was scared to go see him. I could, I had one opportunity. I didn't, oh yeah, he's kind of a scary guy. <laughs> he was a I little didn't intimidating. Go. I missed it. I missed it. Yeah. 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 No, he was intimidating. But I mean, you know, the thing about him was, he had you know that same thing that I think. Uh, 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 Paul Delay had it too, that just really focus thing, you know, that was totally, they'd kind of find something and they'd really focus in mm. on it and get it. Yeah. You know? Delay's honesty for yeah. me was a huge That's that's huge, yeah. That's how I feel too. Yeah, Delay was, he was a huge influence on me. But I mean, the button thing, yeah. you know, I got to admit, I got into that the same time as, as Clark did. We both kind of got into, and I think a lot of that was the roundabout through George... Smith yeah, because I still love all those. Rec- uh, I'd be. I guarantee you, if you played like the Left My Heart in San Francisco for Jimmy Smith, the or- right. the organist, right. I guarantee you he would go, "Oh my God, is that hip?" Yeah, right. Like, yeah. what? How can I play yeah. it more like that? Right. right. Like, and I didn't think it was hip when I first heard. It. I was like, <laughs> "Why would you want to do that?" But you know, I heard him do "Summertime" and all yeah. these songs that yeah. I ended up later adapting. You know, the "Humble Bug" is really uh, boogieing with George. Dude, and, that that yeah. song of yours, yeah. that, that that see, I just took that boogieing with George and added all kinds of stuff to but it. But you did so much that it's to me. I mean, I can see there's an influence, but yeah. it doesn't sound like it, dude. No, I mean, it, that, it morphed into its own. I thing. learned humble yeah. bug once, yeah, and then I got to the improv section, and I'm like. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I didn't really improv on that, man. Oh, I thought no, some of it was. No, oh. no, no. That's totally okay. note for note every but you time. Could. It's, like, it's like it's like what Magic Dick with with yeah, with yeah. Uh, Whammer Jammer. Whammer yeah. Jammer. Same thing. But yeah, you I could did. though. You could well, improvise. Well, I could. And I did see. improvise on some later recordings since. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I bet they love that stuff at Spa cuz you're, you know, they're, you know, well, the old yeah, guys. Well, yeah, cuz a lot yeah. of the, the blues guys won't Touch a chromatic in different keys like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, anyway, like uh, with with uh, with uh, um, Memphis, you eventually ended up living with Junior Kimbrough. Yeah. So uh, so I was I was working at this Italian restaurant, and then I was I, I got fired from there, and then like all of a sudden, like I met this like producer engineer guy and we were doing drugs together and then i started doing i like skipped the middleman and was starting going right to the drug people right and then uh, i was already like out of control like already yeah and uh it was like a matter of a month that it went from zero to 60 and, wow. and i had never like touched cocaine or anything and, so like, you were in a coke Crack right away. Oh, man. I mean, it started off with Coke for like a week. Yikes. And then it was crack. Oh, man. And then, um, I mean, it was bad. And uh, then David Kimbrough and uh, uh, Kenny uh, Kimbrough, Dwayne Burnside and uh, Gary Burnside were walking down the street in Memphis and met me. And then they gave me a gig in Holly Springs. And the gig was basically I just lived with David. And then hmm. I played Sunday nights and sometimes other stuff. Were they into drugs or not? No, like they. So they kind of helped clean you up. Yeah, I mean, and if they were, they kept it from me. Like yeah. I think David might have had like periods of relapse or periods of maybe dealing uh-huh. drugs or something. But and I know other guys did yeah. deal, but right. didn't didn't do them. And I know a couple of the other guys that did do them. Mm-hmm. Okay, but they kept that from me. I was allowed to smoke weed. And hmm. drink, right? Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they kept me pretty good. David genuinely cared for me, but that she was crazy too. You know what I mean? That whole time period down there, yeah. there was some nuts things that happened. Da- David had a very, very hard life and had been to prison a wow. couple of times already and had very complicated relationship, blues music versus, you know. Gospel. Right, yeah. secular wow. and non-secular. And, and that played into like uh, periods of of conflict for him inside, and and, and it was it was hard to be around. That's and, not unusual. No, and it, I don't no. think it was unusual either. That no. I found in the South I, especially. that like I I sought out first Pat, who was already also in recovery mm-hmm. and was sober, and that was like a, a a role model. And then I ended up with David, who was a lot like my father 
except black and from the south. But in terms was, of was he his relationship with alcohol? Was he older? David was a little older than me, like yeah. ten years older than me. Yeah. You know, but had his shit together more than I did. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Yeah. But there was a lot of that Jekyll and Hyde and a lot of uh, genetic alcoholism, genetic yeah. personality disorders, probably, you know, I don't, whatever you want to classify that shit as now. We didn't, right. then, it was just fucked up, you know. Wow. Yeah, part of my language, yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds like, uh, it sounds like a, a real kind of, a lot of lessons were learned early on. I had to get out, man. I mean, uh, yeah. what, you know, one night... David and I got into it physically, which was just David. Beat, yeah. Beat, I couldn't do anything. Wow. I, I, he was a big dude. Yeah. I, I, I always knew they were uh, of Native American descent. Um, really? Because, well, first I thought about it because of the music. Uh -huh. Like I had heard some powwow recordings. Interesting. And I... It, and it was the only thing that, like, okay, because, like, RL, you can hear, like, the relationship between right. Fred McDowell. Right, and, I can and, hear and, that, yeah. But when you listen to Junior, it's, yeah. it's weirder. There's something yeah. else there, right? Huh. And I had heard some powwow recordings. Wow. And um, they sounded, like, more influenced. And when you listen to, like, Other Turner with the drums and fight right. and stuff, right. there's this, all this Native American influence. And then David's cheekbones and, and the color, they had the red tinge in Junior, too. Interesting. And I only recently found out from Cam Kimbrough that they are Cherokee uh, wow. of descent. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I found out also that Junior still spoke some Cherokee. Whoa. And it would speak to Cam and David in Cherokee, which I never got to actually witness. What a trip. So, right, and so that's interesting to me, too, coming from New Orleans with the Mardi Gras Indian right, culture and that right, being a, absolutely. A, something that my wife, primarily, but me, I've gotten musically, I'm into it. She's into it culturally. She's been lis right. listening to a lot of the elders and stuff talk about what where, where stuff comes from and what is exactly happening on those Super Sundays. So you knew those guys from way back, the North Mississippi All-Stars. I didn't know them. I, they came to Juniors once. And the only reason I even knew it was them was they were white kids that were not yet 18. Uh -huh. And I was worried for them. But they were fine. They just sat in the corner and you watched. You were worried for them because they were white kids? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. They, not that the, anything bad was going to happen to them, but they would get taken advantage of. Right, right. And, and honestly, at that point, I was poor, too. I had the thought of maybe what could I get? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because I did that. If you were drugging, I yeah, did shit yeah. like that. Like when white guys would come, or harmonica players, so they, they, you know, like you, you, sometimes you see on people's bios that say fronted the band at Junior Kimbrose. Right. Like okay, yeah, meaningless. Let me yeah. tell you what happened. Okay, they were gambling. Right. And didn't want to go on stage. Right. Right. And they just let you do it, and they yeah. didn't care. And you yeah. had like a drummer. Right, that was it. Right, like yeah. maybe. Right, yeah. So, like, so were the Black Keys really in that scene at all? No, I didn't even know about them until like the early two thousands. Yeah, and they and I was a little actually. The reason I never did any North Mississippi music was because of the popularity of the of the All Stars and the Black Keys. I was a little protective. Yeah. Of it, and I first of all I felt like, how dare you? Right. Like because well the way. The Black Keys are, and I don't care if they're listening or not, the, the way they were, when they came out, they dropped a cover band record. Yep. It was Junior Kimbrough and R.L. Burnside cover songs Wow, with no real mention in the liner notes at, at all That's of awful. where yeah. this music came from. That's and, awful. And, and, yeah. and it's like, and, and it's not That's like. That's not right. And I yeah. had the thought yeah. before that to do and exploit exactly that right. way. Right. Because I knew this music would be hip with kids. Yeah. Because it had a punk and it was. edge. It was. It yeah. had a punk edge to right. it. Right. was the guy at, uh, that, that, that ended up recording all those guys? Fat Possum. Fat Possum, yeah. And, uh, and just that, you know, that whole kind of what they, what they ended up doing was very much, you know. Exploitive. Exploitive, and, and, yeah. and I just didn't want to be part of it. Yeah. And like, and it was so trendy. And right. it, and and it's like and then well it, it didn't get trendy until R R L cut that album with John Spencer Blues Explosion right right and that which was by far the worst yeah R L of his records yeah 
I mean, th- yeah. th- there's actually not a bad RL record until that one. Yeah. And, and like, and that's everybody's favorite today. Right. right? It is like right. just screaming. It kind of reminds just, me of the Buddy Guy record that they did too. Same sort I of thing. I kind of like that Which, one. Though. It has some good stuff. On I kind of like that yeah, one. It has yeah. some good stuff on it. I mean, but they were going like fuck and motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. They were getting RL drunk as they I could think, possibly I think a lot it. of it was it was that kind of rebellious. It was the rebellious nature of what the old blues guys could be yeah. that they glommed onto. Oh, and they pushed it. You know, and, they, and they pushed yeah, it. Yeah. These guys are bad men. They've right. been to prison. They've worked on parchment farm. They got guns. Yeah, they got they're, guns they're and They're misogynistic. Yeah. You know? I went to RL's house. Okay. It was insane. Yeah. Well, there was a... 13 there's, there's, kids. It was crazy. Like, yeah, but the, yeah. That. Eric escaped all that. Eric Eaton and, and yep. you know and, and Kenny Brown too. Like well, Kenny, Kenny now yeah, so Kenny, Kenny was deep into it. Well, Kenny just wandered through the woods and found RL. Like they wow. were living next door. Wow. And, and like and just so they so Kenny Kimbrough is not like a white person that went there like me. Yeah. Like a tourist sort of. Yeah. Kenny is from that area. Yeah. And his poor white background, right? Poor from poor white sharecroppers, right? Right. Okay. So he's grew, way more in it than Kenny's yeah. father knew RL's father, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Way more in it. Oh yeah. 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 They, he's. I I think it's very very safe to say, despite his color, he's one of those people. Right. He's absolutely. Did he take the Kimbrough last name? Oh uh, no! Uh, what Kenny Brown? Yeah. Why? Well, you what? said Kenny Kimbrough. Oh no! I meant I meant Kenny Brown. I'm sorry. Okay, no, I just, yeah. Kenny Kimbrough is Junior Sun. Okay, I just got right. it mixed up. Okay, I'm so that's sorry. All right. That's yeah. All right. No, but yeah. 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 All right. Well, yeah. I mean, I I I totally agree, and it's kind of like. I got to admit, I mean, you know, my feeling about, you know, a lot of what was happening with that was it was a money-making machine for the old guys. Yeah. You know, the fat possum tours and all that. They didn't make any money, bro. Really? I mean, on the tours, maybe. Yeah. But not on the other stuff. Not on the recordings? Wow. That's cold, man. That's really cold. It was awful. Yeah. And they're still not. They still can't get gay. Yeah, it's complicated. Sure it is. Cam Kimbrough is really together. Yeah. Really together and um and making some amazing music. Robert Kimbrough Sr. too is making some good music. Mm-hmm. We just lost David two years ago. Wow. Kate and I went to the funeral. Yeah. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah. It was sad. It was really, yeah. really sad. Yeah. 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 It's, it was well it's a real you know, I mean, when you get down to it, it's a real complex thing about black blues musicians in the South and white musicians coming into it yeah it gets very very uh yeah political and sensitive and and cultural appropriation and all the stuff that goes with it i was really aware of that right away like yeah. um i was made aware of it mm-hmm. by them yeah um right away right away I bet. and so it was a matter of survival that i learned to be jason hmm. and right away yeah. Otherwise, it was not going to fly. Right. Like I'd get, I'd get my ass whooped. Yeah. At best. Yeah. Killed at worst. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, one of the reasons that I went in such a modern direction with blues was because of that. Yeah, because yeah. those guys were like, "Dude, be you. Interesting. Like, don't play. Yeah. Like that happened a long time ago. Like yeah. I'm glad you know it and like it. Right. Interesting. But, right. Yeah. That's interesting. And yeah. also, that's what they were doing. Too in their yeah, own way. They yeah. were doing right? that. Like David yeah. could they play. Were, his, they were doing that. Yeah. David Kimbrough could play Junior's music, but he, right. and he did, but for a portion of the night in yeah. tribute. Yeah. And then the rest of the night he did David, yeah. which was more like Bobby Rush or Prince right. or something like that right. than, than it was like no, I Kimbrough. Get that. Yeah. I get that. I mean, I got to admit, I, I came up in blues in a more. Kind of, uh, I think I was always looking for the real traditional kind of thing, well, and it was kind of like yeah. that's what really kind of wrote me in. So it was kind me of like, too, though. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. I still have a a real uh, I don't know what's the word admiration for appreciation. For yeah, it, for yeah. all of that Chicago mm-hmm. stuff and and West Coast stuff too, and and you and you and Primich and and everybody else and Kim and everybody yeah. that came, but like. 
But like when I got down there and I heard that music and I Well, I can understand it. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. This isn't even considered blues by the people that tell me what blues is. Right. And look who's playing it. Right. Black right. people who right. are related to Fred McDowell, right. who are related right. to John Lee Hooker. So what is this paradigm I've been taught? And then and then yeah. and then Johnny Adams and and uh and then Bobby Rush, and then uh, and Walter Cla Washington, Clarence yeah. Carter, Walter right. Washington, yeah. and this whole black blue scene yeah. with black festivals yeah. that are attended only by black people. Right. That still people on like Blair, Blues Lovers, uh, the, the Facebook page, they don't even want to talk about it. They don't acknowledge it. Right. They're, they're like, oh, there's no black people at Blues Festival. No, there's entire black blues festivals. <laughs> right. Right? You just don't call it blues. Right. You're a white person telling right. them what blues is yeah. and then telling us that we're racist. The, the, ir the ironic <laughs> part, part of the whole thing, I mean, you know, I know, I know Bobby Rush, and Bob, yeah. Bobby's always been really nice, super nice. He's great, yeah. and he's very supportive of you know what I do and yeah. what a lot of other musicians yeah. I play with do. But he's kind of like, you know, he's coming at it from a different angle. He's coming at it from an angle of this is what I listened to when I was young. Yeah. And that's how come he appreciates it. Yeah. He appreciates it because there's a certain thing in his life that, you know, he heard Little Walter and Chicago yeah. Blues, and he relates to that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, Corky Siegel told me the same thing. He goes, he goes, you know, when I hear you, it reminds me of those old days. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I look at it from that angle. I mean, if I can get that. Yeah, but, like, your, you set, know, your set last night was... You know, cool. I it mean, was I, different. It was, yeah. <laughs> and I was I was really into it. Yeah. Like for what? Oh, cool, yeah, like man. for the first song. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. I went right after the show was over. I, I went to Randy and I was like, yeah. hey, hey, who wrote that first number? You know, what's, you know, where'd you, where'd the, you know, where do I get that stuff? Like, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and the funny thing is, I mean, for myself, I found myself going back to stuff I, like, stopped listening to 30, 40 years ago. 40, 40 something yeah. years ago. Yep. I stopped listening to psychedelic music and right. and all the stuff that got... I, I think that's something that happens when you get older, is you find yourself well, kind of going back in they, the same way Bobby Rush or James Cotton, those well, guys did the same thing. Well, when I was putting out those records on Delta Groove, that's yeah. what was happening, because... Yeah. See, when I when I came out of the closet, I had this boyfriend, and we had been together for a lot of years, and I'm keeping it secret and shit, and I come out, well, I didn't just come out as gay or bisexual, I came out as, well, I also like the Pixies right. and the Ramones, <laughs> yeah, right. and not only that, I'm going right. to put it on the record. Right. Yeah, it's, right. Going, it's going on the record. Right, right. And I remember one time sitting with you. And yeah, I, and I, I remember I, that. And I you, remember and, that. And you're pulling out, you got the CD box right. collection, right. like Nick Drake and like all this stuff with this hip shit in there, and like... And I'm like, well, how come, Mark, how come you aren't playing any of this stuff? Yeah, well, I was kind of scared to. Well, that's okay. That's what it was. I, I was mean, scared to. Yeah, we, we can be ourselves, right? You know, like, I'm, in, I'm into, like, I mean, I'm like, I got way into uh, Big Star for a while. I don't know that. They're, they're from Memphis. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. I think I think I thought your set last night was one of the well, best, thanks, was the best ones I've ever seen. I like the Down on Me. I'm like, talking about Alex Chilton. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think a lot of it for most of us musicians is you don't want to get stuck in something that this is the only thing you get to do. Yeah, you know, you know it's, saying? it's funny for me because, like, after going through all of that, I've kind of come back to a place where I'm like, I'm just going to chill. I just want to play, and I want to make, make some really good blues. Right. And I want to record it right. Right. And I don't want the guitar player to sound like this. Right. And you can do a little bit of your own thing, but like, hey, come on. Like, at least for this number. Like, the new record I have coming out now. Is kind of a little more of that. It's back. It's back to, like, what I think I was more into when I was younger. Yeah. And then I kind of rebelled against the whole scene. Well, yeah, and you then, did. Right. And, you then did. Now, and now I'm like, yeah. I'm over it. Right. <laughs> like, I, I don't have anything to prove to anybody no, anymore. I can dig, I I'm can just dig like, that. Yeah, I'm I just like, well, like, let's, let's play it yeah. safe and bump. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. And let's record it right. Like, let's get it sounding a little old, too. Well, yeah. I think that the thing that's really drawn a lot of the musicians that I've played with to you you know, like when we've done blowouts together and stuff like that, is that all these guys, you know, Charlie or Wes or little Charlie yeah. or Wes or whoever, they 
they get that you have big ears. Okay. And anybody that has nice. big ears. No, I'm serious. Yeah. Anybody that has big ears, that's somebody that's all right with us. I was. I, I mean, think that's really what it is. I can't. I don't want to cry right now, but, it, you know, you opened the doors to some pretty heavy relationships in my life. You know, like, and, and that one with Charlie was really big. Like, yeah. getting to talk about music with Charlie over the phone after that tour and stuff was yeah. like... And my wife loved him, too. You know? Well, he yeah. dug you a lot, man. I mean, he definitely, you know, I mean, the fact smart. that you were, so the smart. fact you were, you were able to play a lot of the stuff, because that was something I wasn't, I wasn't going to Let's go, like, I'm going to go. Let's like, put it yeah. this way. Yeah. I was not going to go and play gypsy jazz with him. And he knew I that. I shouldn't you know have been. What I'm I shouldn't have been. He was nice enough to talk. Yeah. I learned more from doing it on that tour yeah. about how, I sh probably should have been doing it than, than ever before. Like, if he hadn't given me the chance to do that, right. and then I couldn't go, well, because I would go after the night, every night I would go, hey, what was that one thing there? And then and then how come it doesn't sound like, like this when I do it, but yeah. it sounds like that when you do it? He'd be like, oh, you just need to get rid of the dominant I, seven. I think Charlie yeah. was very into sharing. He was, and knowledge. people didn't realize. Like, he was he, very like, into sharing his knowledge, and he was also very into... If he found somebody that was receptive to it, he just was boom. Yeah, You'd be yeah. wishing you almost hadn't yeah. opened that door up because I he mean would the just, only yeah. the only reason that me and Charlie kind of like went different ways. Yeah, a lot of it had to do with that. Okay, because I kind of started getting a little more maybe standoffish about his ideas. Oh, musical ideas. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, that's kind of. I think that's kind of what it was because. He was, at the time that he really started playing with me, he was way into Gypsy Jazz. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. way into it. And it was almost to the point of the Gypsy Jazz was starting to kind of almost infect the blues in a way. Well, I heard... That he kind of he kind of veered back into the blues. I heard similar criticisms yeah. from... An, I won't say who told me that, but another guitar player said when he first started playing Gypsy Jazz and then would play blues... That yeah, he wasn't the, mixing it he well. He wasn't mixing it well. And that yeah. later, he, right. so then he stopped doing it. He stopped and, doing and then all of a sudden it came together. Uh, right. Years later. And that's true. Yeah. That's totally true. And so by the time, you know, the, the, the Golden State Lone Star Band was really in the thick of it, him and Anson really had it worked out so that there was a real, it was a blues thing. Man. And when he'd play the Gypsy Jazz, it would be a separate thing. And that's the other thing, yeah. like Anson, and that meeting Anson, meeting Robillard. I think yeah. I met Robillard through you. Right. And I met, God, Norsha, uh, so many, yeah. so Soldado. many. Yeah. Portnoy and I right. got to become friends through you, everybody. Yeah. I, I met so many of my heroes through you. Oh, that's nice. And I have wonderful relationships with all of them now. I appreciate it. And that, I look man. forward to more. And one yeah. of the reasons I like playing... Well, okay, you know, one of the things that I would say is this, is one of the reasons I'm not rebelling anymore in trying to play more rocked up or crazy stuff or weird covers and shit is because there's so much weird shit in the blues now. <laughs> that it's the real rebellion yeah, is, is to play some, some that's, roots. That's kind of where I'm at, too. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like listening. I think a lot of us are getting to that point where it's kind of like, if you play traditional now, that's the real rebellion. Right, it yeah. is. Because, yeah. because like, now, because at least, like, okay, you had some of the, like, well, with me, right, Maybe I was playing some crazy stuff, but I could play traditional. Right. I hired guitar right. players that could play right. that way. Right. It was only until I hired a guitar player that couldn't yeah. that I started going, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't, you better, you know, yeah. you've got to learn. I like, like that, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am, uh, man. I, I'm brutal like that. It's you know? good to be, though, man. We have yeah. to learn. You have to learn this. You have to. But, but these people. Here we go. These kids today, yeah. well, <laughs> they don't know any of it. They I mean, couldn't play you a T-Bone Walker. It, get, it, gave me a, it gave me a big respect for you years ago I when story, I was yeah. down in Florida. And I think me and you were doing a harmonica workshop at the Bamboo Room or something. Yep. And I was hanging out with your buddy Frank. Mm -hmm. Frankie. And he played me this cassette of you guys at a jam session. And you were blowing... This like you know, one of those Kimathon things. Yep. And it was it fucking floored me, man. Thanks, man. I'm not just I'm not kidding you, man. It was like when I heard the ideas you were putting through the harp, 
and your flow. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was, I went, whoa, this dude was, is dangerous, man. From I listening, really did. Listening you know, to you seriously. and guys like you. Yeah. That was what it was. And, and that's what Pat never had. Like Pat Ramsey. Right. He never really had that. Yeah. And when he would do those shuffles, those harmonica shuffles, they were so rocked up. That's, that's, right. Well, that's from it, playing with Johnny Winter. Yeah, it just didn't yeah. have that swing yeah. or that or that sense of right. a, a sense of backbeat, right? Or 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 one being. Well, that's also right, the you know. southern rock thing too. Right? All right, that was yeah. the one thing I never really liked. Uh, a lot of Pat's rhythm sections, right. right? You know, now actually I know those guys, and they now those guys are playing everything. Interesting. Like, yeah, but but when they were with Pat, they weren't. It was yeah. just rawr. Yeah. Right. Well, I think, like I said, I think a lot of that kind of stems back to the Johnny Winter yeah. angle of things. Right. But, but Johnny could play anything, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. 